It is no secret that if you want the absolute best price performance, you have to buy on the used market. But not everyone might like to put an used PC on their desk. So the best option is to simply do a case swap. And this will also have an actual value add. So in case you want to resell your PC, this is going to increase the value of the PC and maybe even perform better. Plus, it's going to be better for your health because in this case, well, we will show you in detail, but this PC, the guy was clearly a heavy smoker. So pretty disgusting. So let's get into it. So welcome back to Wattrip PCs. Today, what we have here is a pretty high spec PC that I got for just 900 euros. So the specs are as follow. This thing has a 99 in it, a 10 core 20 threads i9, the i9 10850K. That's a pretty less known CPU. Uh, it's basically from the generation of the 10900K, but it's a CPU that clocks 100 megahertz lower and costs a bit less. I actually already have had one on the channel when it just came out and it was really expensive, so that's good. Then. This PC is mounting a 360mm only one cooler from Arctic, the Liquid Freezer 2, and it has, of course, 16 gigs of RAM. It's some HyperX general standard RAM, but what's good is it has an RTX 3070 Ti from EVGA, and it's a pretty good card. But not only that, it has a 1TB NVMe SSD from the PCI Express 4.0 generation, and then it has an 850W 80 plus gold power supply from Seasonic, the Focus one. So, the only problem, again, is the case and the cleaning condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this very nice Mars Gaming MCV3. Now, this is their latest case. It just came out. And if you know the Hype Y60 and the Lian Li line of case, this is what's called an aquarium case. And uh, this one so far is probably the best value one, but we will take a look at it more in depth soon. So I say we get started by taking this one all apart and see what's inside and what to clean and how to clean it. Let's go. Okay, so the guy put this thing here, which is a GPU stand, and uh, okay, I guess he prevented SAG from the GPU, but he did not prevent the extreme amount of dust that is in there. But the first thing we're going to do is take out the actual GPU. So first of all, we are just taking out the PCIe cables, and then we are undoing the actual screws holding it. And now we are just freeing the GPU. Hopefully from the stand too. These stands, I really don't like them. And this is our GPU. Again, pretty dusty, but not actually too bad on the inside. I was expecting much worse. So this thing, this GPU stand actually had um, their own RGB cables. So, okay, I guess. And we have to figure out how to take it out. Um, we're gonna, wait, maybe it's just glued. I think, yeah, it's, it's just glued. So with a bit of being gentle, you can just free it up. This is going straight into the trash. So, yes. So guys, this is really bad, really bad. While I was dismounting this, I really thought about it. And now it wasn't really my plans, uh, but we do have to wash it. Uh, it's in too bad of a condition not to wash it. So uh, we'll see about specifically what we're gonna do, but the power supply needs to be washed for sure and also the cooler needs to be so we will think about it uh, if we're gonna swap these components out for this build and just build it or if we're gonna just wash it and then rebuild it we will see in a second but they need to be washed so let's keep dismounting it So we're also taking out the CMOS battery, which is an essential step before washing anything if you don't want to fry all your hardware, because this holds voltage. And then we're taking out, of course, the RAM and the CPU cooler. Okay. 
Okay, this is some MX5, pretty bad paste application too, uh, but I think it did the job. So before washing it, it's always better to take out the paste because the paste with water, they spread everywhere and very difficult to get rid of afterwards. So you want to take out the paste beforehand. It's now time to take out the actual motherboard. These guys really went hard on their poor screws, which is not something you should do. I use an electric screwdriver, but I always pay attention to the torque I use because it's very easy to break stuff. So they also missed a screw there. This one wasn't really screwed in. Again, amateur job. I would say definitely amateur. That's not how you're supposed to do it. <clears throat> very good motherboard even though in bad conditions time to take out the m.2 oh this is actually a problem they told me it was one terabyte but it is half a terabyte so oh wait there is another one so it is actually one terabyte okay that's interesting oh so it's actually one and a half terabyte that's really good Take a look at this. Disgusting. Let's take out the power supply. Oh, there we go. It's a very good power supply, but again, in very bad conditions. We need to discharge this thing before turning it on because this thing can hold uh, the current in it for months. So it is necessary. But uh, we now freed up from all the cables. There we go. Okay. So this is our power supply and this is our problem. So the case. Okay, so to discharge the power supply, you wanna bridge the positive and negative wire and the positive with the ground and the ground with the negative. And then do that as you spam this button right there. And also, of course, you want to make sure to fully discharge it beforehand um, by letting the LEDs of the PC draw up completely, clearly. Okay, so before washing, we are actually cleaning up these things and it's going to be real nasty to clean them. So let's get started. be the worst one. Motherboard washing time. Straight on the socket guys, straight on the socket. Okay, the signature washing of the power supply, a true classic. Get all the cables, right there, right there, solid. So it's now time to water cool our water cooler, so. Okay, so we've let everything dry up. Now we're gonna quickly test the motherboard. 
with the graphic card and then if this works we will maybe test the power supply as well now psus usually have a bit of a longer dry up time so we will see but they should all be working actually okay so here we are installing this i9 10850k in the motherboard after washing it let's slide it in let's close the socket right there we did a quick test boot as you can see without even slotting in the cooler and everything is working fine so now we can test the graphic card but motherboard cpu ram all working so far okay so we mounted the ram tested it out now we're gonna mount the ssd well it's really simple and then we will basically mount the cooler back we will come back for the paste application and the gpu is still wet at the moment same goes for the power supply so they're not working yet but we will mount those guys in there and get everything ready to be mounted waiting for those to dry okay so we have everything lined up and since we're using an arctic cooler it's only right we use some arctic mx6 so let's go ahead and apply it i will use the dot method since it's pretty small cpu still lga 1200 so there we go this is gonna be plenty for the cpu and now it's time to actually apply the cooler pretty simple we already have the standoffs on we did not take them out and then obviously we get all the screws in place and we're done okay so now since it's winter we've had quite a bit of troubles actually getting the stuff dried up so what i had to do is i had to use this a little heater and now as you can see the power supply is working properly and the graphic card is working properly too and everything is basically set up so it's really just a matter of getting everything into the case we have already windows installed with all the updates so let's get building okay so here we are with the mars gaming mcv3 their latest aquarium like case let's open it up So we will start by putting the motherboard in. So we simply take out the front panel and then since we have already everything set up with the RAM, the cooler, etc., we just have to slide in and basically slot in that, the power supply, the GPU and the build is done. So let's get working. It's gonna be a bit difficult. <laughs> okay, so it actually didn't fit here because the Arctic cooler is especially thick. So we're gonna just put it up top and be sure to have the cables. Your tubes from, from the only one cooler that go this way, not the other way, okay? Let's go. Okay, so the power supply just goes in from the back and the fan acts as an exhaust as usual right there. You guys, check this out. How do you make a case this small that can fit through 360 millimeters radiator? Well, to put the lowest fan, you have a hole in which you have to go into with your screwdriver to actually reach the fan. That's really smart. Okay, guys, so everything is ready. Let's see if it works. Do you think it will work or not? Do let me know. Okay, we have some light. That's that's a good start. Let's see if we get a signal though. Come on. Yes! Okay, it's working. So let's close it up and then let's get into testing it. I think it will go fast. We never cable manage. Never. I said never. Nice. Okay, and the first one is gone. <laughs> That's nice. Great job. All right, guys, so here we are with the PC fully finished after testing all the games. And first of all, I think it really looks stunning. I love 
this new Mars gaming case I think it does pretty much everything that the other competitors do but it does it at a cheaper price and more importantly it does it while being much more compact it's really insane that they managed to pack two 360 millimeters radiators into such a small case this one is much smaller than the other aquarium case so I can definitely recommend it for that reason alone plus the temperature is actually really nice there is some very good airflow in there as you can see we put two fans down so the airflow comes up since uh, hot air tends to go up it's pretty good comes up cools the GPO a bit more and then the fans on top from the arctic radiator pull it out of the case the fans right here they also pull it out so it's a bit of a negative pressure which helps with dust and it's honestly really nice but you will see better when we discuss the thermals now before that let's get into the benchmarks the performance is really amazing i think honestly those i9s can be had for extremely cheap and they are great cpus especially the 10850k so when it came out for those of you that don't know this is a bit of a lower bin version of the i9 10900k so it's a 10 core 20 thread cpu from the 10th gen in the 11th gen intel actually switched back to the 8 core uh, 16 threaded one so this one was a bit of a unicorn and this one is was cheaper than the 10900k at launch so it's even better in that sense today it can be had for really cheap on the used market so again pretty good buy same goes for the 3070 ti uh, it's a pretty overlooked card but it's a very good card and this custom from evga is just really good it, it it has a switch on the car to overclock it out of the box it runs extremely cool we run all the tests and the vram did not exceed 60 degrees now for those of you who are familiar with uh, gddr6x you know that that overheats a lot on 3090s it goes up to 98 degrees here it stays at 60. the core is also extremely quiet staying at around 60 in the same tests and all of that while being really quiet so it means the airflow is good certainly the fans on the bottom are helping but the card itself is also really nice for the cpu we did a run with prime 95 small fft which is the hardest possible thing you can do on a cpu and even like that with the fans on quiet mode it did not go over um, 89 degrees so it did not reach 90 degrees so that's really good it didn't throttle at all you can just unlock the power limits in the motherboard and it will run perfectly I also have an overclocking tutorial for this CPU on the channel in case you want to watch it. I made it back when it came out in 2020. And then I also have an undervolt in an overclocking tutorial for the RTX 3070 Ti in case you want to get a bit extra score. But with the stock score, we managed to do close to 30k in Firestrike, which is extremely nice. And we also tested a couple of games, and the results were amazing there too. Not to mention the CPU-Z benchmark, which shows the synthetic potential of the CPU is great. In multi-core, it's still hard to beat, but let's get on to the gaming benchmarks. Now, we tested the three most popular games at the moment, Apex Legends, Fortnite, and Call of Duty Warzone 2, the new Battle Royale, and the results were really nice. In Warzone, this thing can keep close to 200 FPS average if you use competitive settings, so with lower graphics and improved for performance for you to play smoothly so the one percent low is still a bit low around 90 but it's to be expected because it's a very um not so much well optimized game plus it's pretty new but on fortnite and apex legends in both you can do 240 hertz gaming with a pc like this one we were getting over 240 hertz easily in apex same goes in fortnite Again, with competitive settings, so you do a blend of high and low settings, I think it's the best way to play it. It's how I personally play it. And uh, again, very smooth experience. We also played a bit of Genshin Impact just for the lols, and of course you can max it out uh, easily with no problems. In Fortnite, with the new mode in which you can max out the detail and make it actually pretty um, demanding, we were still getting around 180 frames, so that's really nice even there and then this of course this card has dlss and everything uh, we have an nvme ssd and so i think overall it came out really nice really smooth build process love the case and i'm very happy with the pairing and how it came out but do let me know is there something you would change would you have any suggestions for me or do you just like it if you've seen this this far maybe drop a like drop a sub and see you in the next one guys bye